the next name next SCP is SCP-1712, an unusual occurrence on August 11th, 1959. Wait, that's the title of the SCP? Yep. Okay. All right. SCP-1712 is a collective designation for two anomalous objects which manifested as the result of an unexplained event. Despite various attempts at recreating the event utilizing SCP-1712-B and subjects similar to SCP-1712-A, the Foundation was not successfully created another SCP-1712 event. SCP-1712-A is a petrified body of one Richard Boyd, a citizen of Chicago, Illinois, in addition to half of the Iron Beam. Currently, it is located at the outer rim of the solar system and it is moving at a rate of about 20 kilometers per hour, with its speed increasingly increasing exponentially. SCP-1712-A is expected to reach observable range within five years. It is currently unknown if Boyd possessed anomalous properties prior to becoming SCP-1712-2. Oh, wait, SCP-1712-A. That's wrong. Alright, anyway. SCP-1712-B is a tabby kitten with black and white fur. It weighs 8 kilograms and displays behavior expected for a cat of its age. When SCP-1712-B uh, makes contact with living tissue, the tissue will immediately transform into stone. This transformation occurs uh, instantaneously and will also affect non-organic matter. The subject is making direct contact with, such as clothing, held objects, and the ground beneath them. This effect appears to extend about a meter in diameter from the closest source of the formerly living tissue. SCP-1712-B has not been noted to age during its lifetime in containment. And there you go, there's the description. the whole wait then how wait <laughs> okay so there, we've got a medusa cat that apparently medusified this guy from chicago what the fuck caused him to be <laughs> well it says right at, at the uh, it says right up under where bright stopped reading no <laughs> bright what Keep reading. No, uh, well, I'm pay taking pictures and sending them in discords. I actually can't read it, so I, I can read it. Don't worry, I'm take taking pictures so you can read it. Wait, is it? it wait, it's T O S. What? No, 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 no! It's just really small font. It like hurts my eyes. Oh, that's weird. It doesn't look like small font where I am. Can't you I zoom in? Screenshot. Have you have you ever used the zoom in function on your on Does your browser? Does that help? Oh, I've still got the man on my screen. I... Here, I'll, here for a change. I'll read this bit. Oh, I was just about to send pictures. Uh, I I can read what Jiri said. Wait, why does your site look different from mine, Jiri? I don't know. Are you what? zoomed out on your browser? No, hold on. Look at my look at mine compared to Jiri's. Hold on. Look at mine compared to Jerry's.
Well, what's the what you have, cider? Oh, you have more stuff. Yeah. Uh, Jiri's using a different site. Yeah. Oh, are you using SCP Wiki or a different site? It says the SCP Foundation. Yeah, it's the dash SCP dot foundation. Yeah, I think that's not the actual wiki. Yeah. Uh, then I yeah. guess, Bright, go ahead and read. Uh, if I can. Oh, wait, if I, if I put it in pictures, it, it gets bigger. Okay, so that's a bit helpful. <laughs> but also, like, couldn't you have just, like, used the zoom function on your on your browser? No. What do you mean, no? Because I'm not using my computer. You're not using your computer? No. I'm using my phone. Oh. Uh... That would explain Wait, but... the small font commentary. Wait, but then can't you just like do do the outward pinch? Like like put two points and then try to zoom in? Eh. Hold on, let me test the super. No, oh no. No, because when I do the pinch thing, it goes, Oh, you want to go to a different tab? No, I don't want to go to a different tab. How the fuck? What? Okay, your phone's on crack. Yeah. Whatever. Let's just just go ahead and read. I have to know how this man ended up in the outermost reaches of the solar system. Uh, article UE-1721. Event description. On the morning of August 11th, 1959, Richard Boyd was wor working in his office when he witnessed... Witnesses say he noted a cat on the construction area and attempted to crawl out onto the construction area to rescue it. Against the advice of others, after contacting the cat, Richard immediately lost his balance, fell, and vanished from sight. Date of Occurrence August 11, 1959 Location Chicago, Illinois, United States Follow-up action taken MTF Kappa 11, aka Red Bearings, was mobilized to track Richard Boyd's location, but were not able to track it after it exited, exited the operating range of their aircraft. Foundation personnel were able to recover the involved feline and administered Class B and MS 6. To all witnesses, the cover story of a auto homicide was. Decim decimated. Boy's supervisor Michael Margillis was interviewed to obtain information on the subject. A transcript of the interview has been attached below. Update November 22nd, 1961. Visual contact with Richard Board has been re established using satellite imagery due to the ongoing nature of this anomaly. SCP object classification is currently pending. So, by falling off in a construction site, he got instantly teleported into space. I don't know what it sounds like because he started... Okay, the wording of that made me think that the jets, like the planes, were tracking him for a bit and then they lost him. Yeah, that was what happened. Okay, so he he fell, the, the the cat turned him to stone, he fell, and he started rapidly gaining speed and shooting all over the place until eventually exiting Earth's atmosphere and ending up at the outermost reaches of the solar system. I don't think that's a friendly cat. What the fuck did that cat do? I think, like, that's the thing. This seems to be that something that the cat just doesn't like, the cat's just a normal cat. It just so happens that this cat also turns things to stone and can apparently do that. <laughs> uh, I am positive it is not a normal cat. 
Well, no, like it, it it was described as like having all of the behaviors of a normal cat of its appeared age. It like it, in every other respect, it is a normal cat. It just can do that. That's hmm. So like the cat really can't be blamed. The cat's just being a cat, but for some reason. <laughs> the cat causes this. I don't. Where? Yeah. Where the, f- the the I'm looking at the conversation. It's just them talking about what they've, what we just read, really. But ma- mainly, Margillis is just getting angry at the cat. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to hear it. Yeah. Let's let's hear about the cat. Let's hear about. A guy getting angry at the cat. Interviewed Michael Merkulis, sales department lead, Chicago Meat Packaging, LTD. Interviewer, field agent Valdez. Forward, agent Valdez interviewed Margulis under the guise of a Chicago Police Department investigator to obtain as much knowledge on a UE-1721 as possible. Again, law. Thank you for agreeing to this interview on su- such short notice, Mr. Margulis. It's no problem, Detective. I'm fixing the- I'm fixing to figure out what happened just as much as anybody. Smoke? No, thank you. Of course, Detective. Now what can I do for you? I'd like to ask you to describe the event in- to the best of your memory. I don't reckon my story is any different from anyone else else's. But here it goes. We file our sales reports on Tuesdays, so all the guys were out there earlier today. Everything was normal till I hear Wilkins and Roberts yelling after Boyd. I assume you left this office at this point? Right on the money, detective. I go outside to check on the ruckus, and I see him out on the first window you passed before coming in here. He's doing a balancing act out on those beans all of the all for a damn cat anyways the wind just so happens to blow it a little a little stronger than it was and regular slams his desk kaput gone I think the cat fell off too an on-site investigator n- noticed that a chunk of the bean was he was walking on was missing as well he didn't hear a thud or anything like that Buddy, I trust those union builders as much as as far as I can throw them. That beam is probably made of plastic. Wouldn't surprise me if poor old boy hit his flea bag and so-called beam wound up in that in the river. Do you suspect the construction workers at all? Nah, they're honest people trying to make a living. It's a threat. Those union organizers. And their piece of shit protests that get under my skin. Those damn unions, I tell you. Right, I have a few more questions for you, Mr. Margulis. Apologies, Detective. It's been a strange day. It's it's not every day a man vanishes literally in thin air. Ah, hell, excuse me, you were saying, Detective? Now, I would just like to ask you a few questions, uh... About Mr. Boyd, did he get along well with his co-workers? Any abnormalities in his behavior as, as a plate? No, not that I can think of. He got along fine with other guys, but he's always been one of those quiet ones. Didn't smoke or drink either. Uh, and if his performance, well, he's always made quota. Never really excelled, but never really fell behind his, the pack either. If anything, he was reliable. What about his personal life? Has he ever talked about a family or anything of that nature? In the 10 years he's worked here, he, had, he ain't ever brought up a gal or any, any kids. He's only been taking a few personal days and been sick a few times. He must, he must have parents, but he ain't ever mentioned them. You figure they're dead? We're looking into that. One more question, if you will. Fire away. Was it in Boy's character to put himself in danger like that? Hell no. He was as meek as they came. 
need a real soft spot for cats though. Every now and then I would catch him find him feeding the strays by the dumpster. And he'd always he'd always be tearing up and sniffing. I think he had one of those, what do you call them? Allergies? Yeah, that's it. Well, thank you. F oh. Wait, it was only one time he got mad at the cat. He spoke more more about how he hated you than how he hated the cat. Yeah, he, yeah, he just like spoke this. really hated unions. Also, but... <laughs> union builders are fine. Their equipment is fine. The material is fine. God damn. Hey, it's just... What? He's... He's angry about the unions doing their thing, and then somehow that translates to the metal beam is made out of plastic. Well, back love... then in the 1950s, there was a lot of propaganda against unions. Actually, oh. what I'm talking, what am I talking about? That shit has come back stronger than ever. It's just now it's not legal to uh, hire people to beat the shit out of norm of out of the union workers. I yeah. mean, point point being, one I love like there was no new information gained from that log, but I just love the fact like I, I genuinely want to commend the writer for that is like in that short bit of time you can like. You can so easily just like completely understand this guy. <laughs> yeah. That's 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 good character writing there. But 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 besides that, um what the fuck do we do with this cat? <laughs> Where do we put the cat? <laughs> the cat that sends people to space. <laughs> well, the they like, only did it, that it to only... one person, the cat's harmless. Besides yeah, like, one person. Well, the cat like still turns things around it to stone. Oh, but, that's that's fair. But like the, again, like for the SCP Foundation, that's practically nothing to deal with. Yeah. I feel I, like this would be certain groups since you can't get near the cat. Anyone that gets near the cat, uh yeah. It, yeah, it, I think that's I, I mean, at this point, maybe we should just say only one because there's only one guy that had issues. Yeah. Well, to be fair, if a bunch of people go up to the cat, that's probably a lot of new stone statues. It's like Medusa's pet cat. You know what would be really fucked yeah. up if the guy is still alive? Don't say that! Let's, Don't let's say not, that! Let's not think about that. Let's just... <laughs> so. Let's just imagine while the statue of him is somewhere in space, Let's just imagine he's not alive. Hey, don't... Let's imagine he's not alive! Okay. How the fuck would that even work? This it is the SCP universe. He would be in an eternal stasis where he might or might not be conscious while in the stasis state. That's I mean, not what I said. I know we're going to eventually go to it, I mean, but there is this... key. I'm not, I'm not sure if it actually is Keter, but there's this anomaly that's like literally puts you in a void and you lose all your senses. Uh, is it the. The prison um, one? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. So, so. Being in space as a stone statue and still being alive can still very well happen in the SCP universe. That I hi those are not correlated in the slightest. What I'm saying is this like uh logic can be broken in the SCP universe. Oh well, yeah, but that doesn't mean that we just just start breaking lo logic willy nilly randomly. Well, it's like, 50 50 they're alive or dead. Let's just put it at that. No, it's not 50 50 no, no, they're no, alive or dead. No. That's what? not how that works. Just because you, right? Just because you can think of a possibility does not mean that it is a likely possibility. Can we just 
just, I know it might not be true, but can we just assume he's dead? He might be alive, but let's assume he's dead, because otherwise, if he one day comes back and one day unstones, then that would mean everyone... Really, Chew? Let me just get rid of this alarm. Really, Chew? I guess that's good timing. Anyway, <laughs> ignoring that uh, alarm, what if he was alive and he one day became no longer stone? Literally, everyone he ever knew would already be dead. Yeah. Oh, I think the point I'm trying to get across is this is a stupid line of reasoning that Bright just pulled out of her ass. There's there's no reason to presume this or even think about this. It's just Bright randomly goes, what if she's alive? And then starts pulling numbers out of her ass. I mean, well, wait, wait, I noticed something that's even weirder to being turned to stone and still being alive. There's this SCP that literally puts where where they make you put a diver suit on and your whole body becomes water. Oh yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. So <laughs> Well no, water except for the teeth and the eyes. Yeah, except for the teeth and eyes. If you take the suit off, you're dead. Yeah. So let's just all come in agreement that nothing in the SCP universe fully makes any sense. <laughs> well, no, actually, there's quite a bit that fully makes sense because it's it, it, it's be, it operates on our logic and then subverts it with anomalies. Yeah, our our existing world's logic. It. it I am not becoming Matt Pat. Fuck that, Chew. I mean, you're basically doing that when you just like, but what if he's alive? It's a 50-50 <laughs> chance that he's alive in there. Well, technically, if you read on the foundation page on that SCP, it does sound like that he's very likely alive in there. Wait, seriously? I just well, think about it. Uh, everything else that has been uh, affected by the kitten was alive and fine. So think wait, about that. Wait, everything else that... You're saying that they were able to demonstrate that the things the cat turned to stone were alive. Well, they. I don't think the cat... It, I don't think they said the cat turned them totally to stone. Probably meant that either with time away from the cat... Or uh, that was just a small portion of them, or something like that. Either oh, yeah, way, but that's 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 ultimately quite a bit different from the entire body and the brain turning to stone. Well, like I said, they didn't say whether the experiments involved an entire person being turned into stone, besides the one person, or like other things like that. Either way, it showed that thing that the subjects are fine is this now just becoming a debate over whether or not the person in, in, as a stone you know statue is alive or dead like let's just assume he's dead let's just assume he's dead i i'm i'm holding to the position that it makes no sense to assume that he's not dead based upon current information uh, like, I I, I don't think the SCP Foundation can, like, I, I highly doubt that those experiments included them somehow confirming that completely turned to stone organisms are perfectly fine I will after admit contact with the cat. He, it, I'll admit it, he, that one guy sounds like the only subject that has not returned to flesh, which means others were probably only partially turned. Yeah. yeah, like, basically, what I'm trying to say is he's probably 
Okay, how about, yeah, let's put it this way. If he's alive, he's completely unconscious, and there's no signs of him being unstoned. That's the that's not what I meant, but whatever. Yeah. Stoned. He's not gonna Well, it would be very nice soon. to get his stone statue butt from outer space and back into Earth atmosphere. So we could study it. But wait, what if him being in space is the thing that's keeping him from turning back into a human? Are in that case, it's still better to bring him back, but still. I don't want... Now you're bringing up... Oh my gosh! Alright, I know how to... I know how to free, uh, free him from space. What you need to do is get a missile. Fire like, it and have it... Load the statue that might be alive. Fire below, a uh, fire behind no! the statue, so it gets flung back to Earth. <laughs> That's not how you treat people. <laughs> what if he becomes a non-statue and you accidentally blew his hand off? Or then he would bleed to death. <laughs> I mean, you can get a medical wins. attention. Yeah, that's the chance I'm willing to take. Well, yeah, but then he would need that medical attention after going through Earth's atmosphere and surviving. Yeah. <laughs> like, he starts unstoning and he's like, all right, let's go on. Wait, wait, no. <laughs> he just didn't mean to go through the surface of the Earth. I just wanted to help a cat and now I got a no longer having a hand. Yeah. What happened? <laughs> Why am I falling into Earth's atmosphere? I wasn't this high up. <laughs> Chu says hands are overrated. You know what? Let's just let's just pretend like he's probably dead and continue and just pretend this conversation never happened. He's probably I mean, dead. Right. Is it is it pretending if I already think that he's probably dead or effectively dead? That's All realistic. Right. All right, so here's the next uh, picture for next SCP. What? Cat, what are you doing? Why are why am I looking at a bunch of big big math equations? That's what the next SCP is. Math? Uh, math? Maybe. Uh, uh, math is an SCP. I can't get behind there's this. Like a, there are several math SCPs. Oh, give me a minute. I need to placate the beast. No. I'm sorry. You have to wait for the beast to be placated. Cats are that way. Oh, no. I don't mean the cats. I mean chew. Oh. <laughs> Anyway. Hello? Hello? Twitch? Would you... Would you like to... Function? Yeah. Alright, that's what we're talking about. It's SCP-1714. Also known as the... Parsimonious physicist. Wait a minute. Bright, bright pats chew, Jerry bonks chew, and then I start patting chew. Damn it, chew. Okay, chew. I patted you after you were bonked. But here, more pads. Right? What the fuck is your problem? <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> why? Why? Why do you like this? <laughs> because she's bright. Anyway, are we ready? Define ready. No. 
then I guess I'm not ready. SCP-1714 is a partially finished mathematical proof, identified as largely sound by Foundation math mathematicians attempting to create a mathematical framework for the, the analysis of reality-altering anomalies. SCP-1714 postulates a quantum mechanical model for such objects arising from the co coalescence of virtual particles generated from quant what quantum foam. <laughs> Among SCP-1714's most more important sections is a lemma proving the existence of reality bending anomalies as a natural cons consequence of the boundary co conditions of of the universe the lemma predicts the prevalence of redacted alterations in reality as understood by mainstream sci science with only redacted known represent known to and contained by the foundation. Foundation's mathematicians and theoretical physicists have reached the conclusion that SB 1714 in its entirety could be applied to the creation and manipulation of reality altering anomalies by parties of sufficient technological advancement. At seemingly random intervals in the text of SCP-1714 are a series of warnings railing against the complexity of the observable universe and expressing a desire to reconstruct the universe into a form too simple to sustain it. Mm -hmm. These writings vary in tone from clinical to an explanatory to barely coherent and seem to indicate that at least a suspicion of the existence of the Foundation. Excerpts from SCP-1714 I was told by those who lacked vision that knowing all would be impossible. It's, sim it's simpler than they just thought. Alright, no, right, it, it was simpler than they thought. And you didn't obey the, the tricky enemy. You need to cut it down into size. Alright. We hope, we hope you have, we, we, alright, hold on. We hope you have already proven to the reader that the universe is far more fantastic place than modern science has accounted for. That such self referential self nullifying physical laws exist is incredible. In the next section, we prove that these laws can, in fact, be un understood and even manipulated. The author realizes the potential danger of releasing this information, as such, could be. could be abused with impunity. What you must, mustn't worry, I'm going to fix it, Shh. everything will be alright. The universe it speaks to me through the myth, it speaks in a convoluted babble, where is the beauty I was promised? Where is the music of the heavens? There is no music here, only the discord of many voices. So, hmm. Hold on. Uh, just for me. Voices, certain lines must be cut out. The crowd must become an, an ensemble. The ensemble must become a, a quartet. The quartet must become a, a trio. The trio must become... Uh, from one long voice, rising high and pure. So I, the listener, may hear and take the light. Considering a vast number of, of ouroboric anomalies, we provided, we proved, 
do exist in the section above. We must wonder if if they do not serve a purpose. The author is not given a te teleological mode of thought, but we have demonstrated clear, clearly that reality warping and always seem to be a natural consequence of the laws of the, in the universe. It seems to us strange that those same needed needlessly flared laws to also provide our liberation. Yet again, it reveal a kennel of wisdom. Wisdom out for for out of formless terrible chaos comes universal protection. And the final note. It will be purified, all of it. Shake the through the senses uh, of my sleeves and rendered into its most perfect essence into the beginning and the end. The glorious singularity, statics, scarred, and I, and I was becoming, and I was, uh, well, and I beholding its glory, understanding all, knowing all forever. And that's it. Sounds like, yeah. My head hurts. What I can basically describe is that this SCP can be used as a weapon. I... The only way I know to describe what this sounds like to me... Mm -hmm. Is this sounds like someone in the Elder Scrolls series who spent their entire life staring at a goddamn Elder Scroll and they fucking lost their brain to it? Damn. Where the fuck do we put this? It's I, literally just a math equation. I don't know. Like at this point, is this even an SCP? I mean, it's it's a book that shows how to create reality altering things. Did it say that it's a book how to create them, or is it just like, from what I heard, it was just a mathematical equation that demonstrated that reality benders it is would uh, obviously attempting exist. to create a mathematical framework for the analysis of reality altering anomalies. Can you repeat that? All right. Uh, Attempting to create a mathematical framework for the analysis of reality altering anomalies. Okay, yeah, that's not creating anomalies. Okay. It's creating a mathematical framework to understand them with. Yeah, but if this book is in the wrong hands. So, I. I honestly don't see what this book getting in the wrong hands would do. It's literally just a math equation. Like, it's it's an equation that says, based upon these maths, reality benders exist and should exist within expected parameters. That That's it. This doesn't give anyone the ability to create reality benders. It's literally just a math equation. Like, it's, it's not like one of those others where, like, if you create, like, if you do the math equation, something weird happens. It's just, this is a math equation. That's a fair point. It's not even a math equation to help you find the reality benders. It's literally just, 
this equation shows that reality benders exist. That that's it. That's all it does. I don't. I honestly don't see why this would be an SCP. Oh, let alone why it would be a Keter. Is it? Is there something else that we're missing because you didn't read every every part of the article? Uh, no. Uh, well, there was a log where they tried to create it, an anomaly using the book. Did, Did not it? go well. Did not go well. Did they create an anomaly? Uh, there were casualties. <laughs> they created an anomaly using it, and bad things happened. Okay. And, oh, and the person who changed it, uh, was up to, uh, from its regular class of East like, I think it was Euclid, to Keter, was the O5 Council. That means this SCP is purposely leaving out details. Yeah, because... Yeah, because there are test logs of them trying to create stuff with it, and it does not go well. Okay, so... I guess that kind of makes sense. Having the having the equation on hand could be used as a framework to analyze and then be used to create SCPs using the framework built up from it. Yeah, that's why I, I said it could be used as a weapon in a way. But I guess, again, like, this is just... Oh, yeah. In that case, I don't understand how it's a keter. Well, we... Like, I even... Kind of like, like what if you make the wrong SCP. Oh well, yeah, but like classifications like this generally aren't based on speculation. It's based upon like observable reasons why this is trying to get out of the box. It's trying constantly, and it does consistently get out of the box. Then there's probably this... things the O5 Council isn't saying about it. Oh well, yeah, but we're judging this based upon what we have in front of us. There. Like, could there be more to this? I don't fucking know, but I mean, it's possible. But as of right now, all I'm hearing is a math equation. <laughs> and even then, I would still argue that this wouldn't be an SCP, because this is just a math equation pertaining to SCPs. Like, E equals MC squared does not, it is not a math equation that creates the outcome of the, I forgot what E equals MC squared was, uh, I, I forgot what that uh, equation demonstrates, but you, you get my gist, like, Using that equation yeah. can lead to an outcome, but that doesn't mean that that equation is that outcome. Yeah. So, so uh, like, and on top of that, like Keter classification, it's like, is this like a a bunch of books that are in circulation, or is this just a single book? A single Cause book. From, yeah, because from the sound of it, it's a single book, in which case. You put the book in a box, and it's not going to get out of the box. And especially if the O5 is worried about it, they're going to have that guarded. Yeah, like, literally, they can just, like... Uh... Though, Hatchet, you're going to love this. At the end of the first experiment gone wrong, the last thing that was said was... Damn it, damn it. I knew it goddamn vulture capitalists and their bitch engineers. The entire damn device has to be gutted, damn it. That is <laughs> that is certainly a string of sentences. <laughs> or a string of words. And I just see what under it. The remainder of the log contains random characters consistent with the pattern of someone pounding a keyboard with clenched fist. 
Someone was really pissed off that it didn't go well. Uh. So you're thinking like reassigned? I would say reassign. Yeah, this. It's literally just a math equation. I don't know what to tell you. It's. It's just a concept. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? That's a good way to put it. It's a concept. Concepts on their own as they exist in in a vacuum are in no way harmful on their own. It's how someone takes that concept oh, yeah. that can cause harm. Kind of like the Scarlet King. What? The Scarlet King is a concept. That's the final law to the Scarlet King. He is a concept. That's why he was changed from Keter to safe. Because the more you talk about him and the more you fear him, the stronger he gets. Mm. The so, less yeah. you fear him, the less you think about him, the weaker he is. Yeah. He's, he's, he is a concept. Well, wait, in that case, then... W wouldn't he already have been really fucking weak considering the fact that only people within the Foundation would know about him? That's... More people knew him uh, before then. Yeah, the Sarkic they cults. They were able to. Uh... Oh yeah, yeah, Sarkic cults. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the CP Foundation is pretty good at like dimming those people down, but they still exist out there. Oh yeah, and I also forgot another organization that did stuff with the Scarlet King, the Chaos Insurgency. Uh. I got you gotta love that chaos insurgency over there being morally bankrupt pieces of shit in the corner there. You, oh wait, Hatchet, do you know how the chaos insurgency was formed? I vaguely do. I think you've told me before. Basically there were like O five council member. Yeah, one O five council member and their bodyguards decided Fuck this. We're fucking up the world. We're leaving. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just like what, like one, one o five council member just really, really, really wanted to be all for one. Yeah. <laughs> so he just he just nopes the fuck out and starts using all this crazy shit to try to fuck up the world. Yeah. But yeah, I wasn't thinking concept in terms of the Scarlet King. Scarlet King. I'm thinking or concept King. in reality. <laughs> like, mm. um, uh, what's, what's the best example I can think of? The concept of violence. Like, violence on its own is just a natural aspect of reality. Mm-hmm. It's what you take that concept and do with it that shapes shapes whether or not it's a problem or not. Right. Like, is is violence being used to fight against oppression? Then it's being used in a manner that's positive. Is violence being used to engage in oppression? In oppression? Then it's being used in a negative light. Violence right. itself isn't the thing that is bad, it's how people use violence that is the bad. Uh -huh. And this is all very hypothetical in Minecraft, which don't come after me. But... Jeff Bezos says all violence is bad, except for the violence we inflict upon our slaves. My mom's yelling at a cat. Oh, wow. What? For the first, uh, for part one, we only have one, two, three, four. Wait, hold on. Let me count first. Four. Then I'll say something. One, two, three, four. Uh, 
Eight. I love silent streams. Let's see. We only have uh what looks like to be fifty nine left for part one. How many parts are there? Uh, we barely made a dent, Hatchet. We're only in the 1,000s. There's yeah, 7,000. <laughs> so yeah, we didn't hit a dent. <laughs> How are you even divvying up the parts? Uh, I can't add... I actually can't add any more pictures. So I have to create a whole new tier list. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. With all these same tiers? Yeah. Uh, however, I will show you the picture of the next next SCP. I have an idea. What? You can move all the pictures instead of using this tier list. You could technically use a Google document. If you use the right type, you would be able to get all the classifications and all those pictures. I'm lazy. Right. <laughs> Honestly, that this would be an this would be an amount of work where it's like I I wouldn't blame Bright to go the lazy route. That's, that's fair. Anyway, like here. these are like how many how many images are on the screen? Oh Jesus, I don't even know. Like, wait, what's the name of this one? Uh, reassigned to XK. Class Keter rating. No, 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 no. I mean the picture you sent. Oh, SCP-1717, a.k.a. Green Acres. I feel like I've heard of this one. This image looks familiar. Well, yeah, I guess that's... Uh... <laughs> Wait, I... Okay. Before I, I switch over to stream ending, because it's past 1130, uh, I see one of the SCPs which is called SCP-1728, Buttery Decapitated Highwayman. Yeah, I think that's enough information processed by my brain today. <laughs> so there's someone just, like, decapitated dude who's been covered in butter? My head really hurts. I think I've had enough talk today. That's fair. Yeah, things are about done with. 